know you're definitely not ready to have a baby, but you're also really not interested in all the risks and side effects that come along with hormonal birth controls. If so, you are in the perfect place because we are going to talk about all the other options today. Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Nicole, a licensed physical therapist and obstetric and pelvic floor specialist. And today we are going to be talking about lots of non-hormonal birth control options. Let's start with the most effective, the least effective, and then we'll cover everything in between. The first and most effective non-hormonal birth control option that you have is actually a copper IUD. There is only a 1% chance of getting pregnant while using the copper IUD. It's a little T-shaped gadget that they stick up your vagina. It's inserted and the copper with on it actually kills any sperm that get up near the eggs. So there is very, very little chance of fertilization going to happen. The cons of using this copper IUD is that it has to be inserted by a physician. It's something you have to go to the office to have put in your body, and it can be a little bit painful. The other con of the copper IUD is there can be spotting and cramping in between periods, and it actually is known to make the length of your period a little bit longer. But once you have it in and it is working, you can keep it in for 10 years. The least effective option of non-hormonal birth controls is actually the use of spermicides. When using a spermicide, there is a 28% chance that you will get pregnant while using the spermicide. How a spermicide works is that you insert this spermicide as a gel suppository up into your vagina before you have sex and it kills any sperm that gets in its space. My son would call it bubble space. The pros of the spermicide are they are a great second layer of protection and as you are going to see they're commonly used with other forms of birth control to make them a little more effective and it's very easy to get. You can get a spermicide, you can use it, it's pretty affordable in the grand scheme of things, and it's just easy to use whenever. The cons of it are that because it is a chemical that you are putting up into your body, there is a chance that you could have an allergic reaction to it, or it could just in general cause skin irritation, which most of us probably aren't excited about. Since we're on the topic of spermicides, let's talk about some of the other non-hormonal birth control options that you would wanna use with a spermicide. The first is a diaphragm. The diaphragm only has a 6% chance of you ending up pregnant while using it with a spermicide. That's pretty good in comparison to the other non-hormonal birth control options. The pros of the diaphragm are that they're very discreet. You can put it in long before having sex, you can keep it in after having sex, and there's really nothing you have to mess with in the moment. Some of the cons about using the diaphragm are that it has to be prescribed and fit by a doctor initially, although, pro, it is reusable and you can use for, I believe it's up to a year, continue to use that same diaphragm. So that's nice that there's not going to be waste every time. And then that you have to use a spermicide with it isn't really ideal because it can cause reactions, skin, skin allergies, skin reactions for some people. So if that is you, then this option probably isn't the best for you. Very similar to the diaphragm, we have the cervical cap. I'm totally imagining my uterus wearing a little party hat right now. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that is not what this looks like, but that's, that's all I can picture in my mind right now. How this works is very much like the diaphragm. It is just inserted up into your vagina, but this one has to fit just right up around your cervix. And I think that's why there is a higher fail rate with the cervical cap is because it has to be put in right every time. So even though you have to get a prescription and have a provider recommend this product and fit you for this type of a product, you still have to put it in and take it out every time you use it or have intercourse. Now you can leave it in for up to 48 hours, but you aren't gonna like leave it in for weeks or years. So every time you put it in, it has to be put in just right. And if you don't, then it's going to increase your risk of getting pregnant while using it. Here's a fun fact for you. Did you know that using condoms and the pullout method are within 4% of being as effective as one another. So what I mean by that is if you are going to go ahead and use a condom, there is an 18% chance that you are going to get pregnant using a condom. And if you use the pullout or withdrawal method, there is a 22% risk of getting pregnant. I always thought that using condoms was so much more effective than the pullout method. However, there's not much difference if they are used correctly. And let's get a little bit more into that. So with condoms, there are actually two options. You can have a male condom, which I think is a more traditional option that more of us know about. This is when the condom is put over the penis. It collects all the sperm during ejaculation, and it makes sure that none of the sperm goes up into the female body. As long as the integrity of the condom is 
good, then there should be no issue and no problem making sure the sperm doesn't get up to the egg. The downside of the condoms are that you do have to put them on in the moment, and so sometimes that can really be a deal breaker and really ruin the mood. The other thing is that they can be kind of uncomfortable, especially if you are a female that experiences any vaginal dryness, you're newly postpartum, you're nearing menopause, you have just a more dry vagina, it's not uncommon for things to be easily irritated in there, and condoms are definitely going to be more likely to irritate you. The huge pro of both the male and the female condom are these are one of the only non-hormonal forms of birth control that can actually protect you against STDs, including HIV. So if that is something that is of concern to you, then condoms are definitely the best option. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't even realize that the female condom was a thing until very recently. It works very similar to the way that a male condom would work, except for it's in reverse. So there's a ring outside of the vaginal opening and the condom goes inside. This has a very similar effective rate. There's only a 20% chance of getting pregnant while using the female condom. Unfortunately, it's not ideal if you wanna have that rom-com moment where you just clear everything off the table and get right on it to get busy. It's definitely gonna interfere in the moment a little bit more than some of the other options. As I was saying, the pull-out or withdrawal method is actually almost as effective as using condoms. There is a 22% chance of getting pregnant while using the pull-out method. Basically what this means is that before ejaculation, the penis needs to be removed from the vagina and make sure that no sperm are able to get up to the egg. The tricky part about this is that your timing has to be just right. So you have to make sure that everything is withdrawn before ejaculation occurs. And sometimes there is pre-cum that can actually carry sperm. So it's not always as obvious when this is going to happen, but it does need to be removed before the sperm is released. Otherwise there is obviously a risk of becoming pregnant. Okay, this one is a little bit shocking because who would have thought you could stick a sponge up into your vagina and it would prevent pregnancy? It's kind of crazy, but there is such a thing as a sponge as a non-hormonal form of birth control. Now, don't get me wrong, you cannot just run to the drugstore, grab a makeup sponge or like a sponge for cleaning your house and stick it up your vagina. It will not work that way. However, there are specific sponges that are made just for this purpose. And surprisingly, they're effective is actually pretty darn good. If you've never had kids before, there is only a 9% chance that you would get pregnant using this form of birth control. If you've had kids though, so I guess this is me, there is a 24% chance of this failing and me ending up pregnant when I didn't want to be pregnant. How this works is it's a sponge that actually has a spermicide on it. You insert it up into your vagina and a lot of people say it feels a lot more natural than some of the other options that we've talked about today. It puts off that spermicide and it makes sure that it kills, you know, anything that gets anywhere near our eggs. The nice thing about this is that you can just go ahead and take it out when you want to get pregnant and then you can start trying to get pregnant at that time. You don't need a prescription and it doesn't have to be fitted by any type of physician or OBGYN, so you can use it pretty easily. The cons of this again are that it doesn't prevent against STDs, which many of these do not, and that again there are chemicals or spermicide being put up into your vagina, which may not be that comfortable and may lead to skin irritation or other reactions that aren't gonna be all that comfortable. Another option which I feel is very similar to the spermicide is a vaginal gel, which is put up into the vagina and it changes the pH of the vagina so that sperm can't survive and make its way to the egg like it wants to. The cons of this are that it again, could cause an irritation because it is something that has chemical and is being put up into your body, but it also needs to be put in every hour. So if you put it in thinking that intimacy is gonna happen soon and it actually takes longer than you thought, maybe you had too long of a dinner or had too many drinks or for whatever reason, intimacy doesn't happen when you thought it was going to, you would have to reinsert every hour. It also needs to be reapplied every time you have penetrative intercourse again. So if you had penetrative sex and then it was a couple hours later and you were going to have it again, obviously you would need to reapply the vaginal gel. There's only a 14% chance of getting pregnant if you use the vaginal gel. However, you would make, need to make sure you are using it correctly and reapplying at least every hour. I kind of just made that sound like sunscreen. I have two more types of birth control I want to talk about, but before I do that, if you don't mind hitting that like button, I would be so grateful. 
For some reason, people think this option is only for really crunchy people that are super naturalistic, but it's actually really quite effective. This is the family planning or cycle tracking or rhythm method, whatever you wanna call it. It's the method where you basically know what your body is doing, you know when you're ovulating, you either check the position of your cervix, the type of cervical mucus that you're producing, or your basal body temperature, you know when you're ovulating, you avoid having intercourse, or you use a secondary backup method during the times right before ovulation and during ovulation, and you avoid pregnancy by making sure sperm is never in your body when you're ovulating. People think this is like a super risky form of birth control, but if used effectively, it can be up to only a 2% risk of getting pregnant while using it. Now, there's also a 23% risk of getting pregnant if it's not used effectively. Now, when I say effectively, I mean either you don't have regular cycles, so maybe you just had a baby and your cycle isn't quite normal yet, Maybe you are a new person to having your period and your period's still a little bit erratic and all over the place. These are not a good time to rely on this method because you just never know when you're ovulating. Maybe one month it's on day 14 and the next month it's day 21. You need it to be pretty predictable for this method to work. The other reason it might not be a good idea for you is if you're like, no, when I want to do it, I want to do it and I'm going to do it right now because you do need to make sure that you're either using a secondary method or you are abstaining from having intercourse during that five day window of ovulation. Otherwise, it's pretty, pretty likely that you are going to get pregnant. I find it very fitting that the last type of non-hormonal birth control that I'm gonna talk about is actually a very final form of non-hormonal birth control sterilization. So there are two options for sterilization, which basically means you are cutting off the path from sperm being released to getting to the egg. And you can either do this by how the sperm is released by a vasectomy, which is when a male basically gets the tube snipped and the sperm can no longer be emitted or go with ejaculation or you can have the female have her tubes tied. Now, both of these things can be reversed. However, the chances of getting pregnant after reversal is very slim. So this is something that you really wanna use if you never plan on having kids or you've had kids and you're pretty sure you're done having kids. These are definitely a more permanent option. I hope the wheels are turning and you're like, oh my goodness, I have so many options I didn't even know about. If you have more specific questions, I would love to have you put them in the comments and I can either answer them there or make a whole nother video about it in the future. If you are into being empowered and knowing exactly about how your body works, you may wanna check out this video over here about periods because it is also loaded with lots of helpful information. And even more than that, if you wanna make sure you don't miss any videos about awesome topics like this, I highly recommend you subscribe to this channel because that is what we are all about here. Thanks so much for joining me today. It has been a pleasure hanging out with you. I will see you all in the next video.